So this first one is called One Sad Math. You have to eat a pound of dirt before you die, so it makes sense to stop at 15 ounces. Then the skinny guy with the scythe could only marvel at your cleanliness, pass you by as you glitter transfigured. Alas, someday on some grubby farmer's stand, a bulb of celery ac will wink its bland, blotted eye, or so it will surely seem. The richness of root, a steady center, a whiff of trouble, truffle, and then the taste of soil, which it turns out we all love, a fine thing given even without a mouthful of rapacium. It's where we're all headed amidst all the other lovely things underground. Oh, don't start that, because at some point we'll all be disappointed. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Refuel for next home. Um, this one's called Controlled Designation of Origin. Delight that food is an atlas of our days. This meal, that spot, such perfections. Position is nine-tenths of the law. Ask the French, clinging tight to cognac and champagne, the rest of the world left with but brandy, simply sparkling wine. And the Italians, every region with its hams, prosciutto de Parma, San Daniel, Modena, <laughs> distinctions fine as a charcuterie slice. Still, they shout here in a language we taste, with our tongues travel easy as a swallow, mapping the world morsel by morsel. You're also going to get really tired because a lot of my poems are really short. So you can like save up and clap after every two of the sermons or something. OK. Um, for a while, I was trying to do poems based on the history of day things that you can look up. Um, so you'll see where history plays into this one in some ways. Pinned. To pierce, to find peace, it's all we ever care for. One solid wire coiled and carefully caught brought Walter Hunt a patent in 1849 as if no one before had hoped to pin hard and hold and leave nothing barbed. At least till the punk with a pin through his flesh snarled a no like a gun with its safety off, like love. Walter Hunt, inventor of the safety pin, 1849. Um, as the intro said, I've done radio for a bunch of different years at two different times. Uh, so this is one that's called What Radios Taught Me. I like to find music that sounds like other music, play the songs back to back, and yet slowly lead you astray. Wind to a finish imperceptible from a happy-hearted start. I've known people who could do that too, and who doesn't want to be won over, only to find over is somewhere on the magnificent old maps labeled Here Be Monsters. Make me do what I don't want to and make me like it. Or at least like you, that smile you make when you're not trying to smile, but you so love to give yourself away. Back to the chapbook. This one's called Disappearances. Love has something to do with another dimension. Two people eating dinner, not talking as the sky outside gives into darkness and the invisible birds chatter the nonsense of the day until someone, also unseen, claps once and the birds worry themselves into silence quickly so nothing is seen or heard. And the couple smiles. See how their lips rise in unison, how their lips glisten with oils. It's not that they're just full. Leaving themselves behind as they rise and fall to the bed as they forget the couple eating, as the birds forget fear, as the singing begins, as the world rocks on its hips, as night 
opens like a flower, black petals bending, as night allows what it allows, and the bed falls away, and the birds fall away, and falling falls away, till there's nothing, nothing but this. <laughs> Cigarette break. No, <laughs> just kidding. Where am I? Sorry. Let my timer stop. Phone stay on. There we go. I'm way ahead of schedule. Um, this was a poem that uh, Askew published in I'm not sure which issue, so thank you, Ventura, for having me again. And if you know where the title is stolen from, I'll give you a free copy of the chapbook. <laughs> uh, it's called So Generous and Inarticulate. Everything holds its opposite in its hands. It's true. Like lovers who lie like spoons in a drawer of domesticity, back to belly, sleeping each other's dreams. A while back you questioned forever, as if we had a say in fate, as if we could do more than live our lives. We finished dinner silently then, as dusk poured through the screens into the porch, and the creek bubbled and glubbed for us, said all the things still left to desire. I'm afraid that's the best I can offer, handing over a string of now and now and now, the bitter pearls any neck can wear in any light and still look better than anything. So I was putting this together, I was thinking how in a weird way, um, I, I wanted to generalize to everyone, but maybe it's just me that uh, you either write poems about what you want and desire or the things you want to get away from. So there was those last two poems and now there's some family poems. <laughs> you can figure that one out, I think. <clears throat> and a new way to bury my mother. So I made the cake for my childhood, the one the dog, dog knocked off the stove and ate the one with the peculiar name, Kiss Me Cake. My pantry men, I sub dates for raisins, my taste traded butter for shortening, and I drizzled both Grand Marnier and OJ as I had both, the second fresh from an orange plucked just minutes prior outside my door. Meanwhile, my mom, whose only avocado was the tint of her appliances, <laughs> no doubt remembered when oranges were a wonder, her poor dad dead in a coal mine in Scranton. Turns out the recipe isn't even hers, but Pillsbury's, or so Google says, no matter what the cinnamon citrus scent argues from the 1970s, again making me a hungry kid, and meaty knowledge, a hard nut to crack, a pulp ground sweet, and somehow burning. And um, this is for, uh, well, sort of, kind of obvious, but this is one about Bill, my stepfather-in-law who passed away early this year after a long battle with Parkinson's and what that's like, I guess. Everything that rises must submerge. Dying man can't get his want into words, but that doesn't deter want, does it? His moans a call, a question, need, kneaded into a ball of dough no one cares to eat. That bitter salt, a crust that cuts. You hope to help, but there's nothing more pitiful than that, like a stormy sky lit dazzlingly gray while it gathers its forces between pores. Locate the oxygen tube, clip near the nose, loop the doubled hose over each ear, elevate the electric bed until what's left of the fire in his eyes quiets. Silence then a gratitude that floods the sick room. Go, Noah, on your boat to a new clean world. All right. Let's lighten this up with some food poems again. <laughs> this one, the title sort of sets you up, I think. Upon learning coriander comes from the Greek word for bed bug. <laughs> who knew? And who doesn't want to kiss the genius who knew the avocado hid guacamole? 
Sure, there's that pit like a fat fastball you still can't bring yourself to swing at. Sure, there's skin odd like nature's pleather. So stop before you get to turning cilantro metaphor. Just let happiness be your mouth green and creamy. Don't ever forget the salt, or worse, that some souls find cilantro tastes like soap, and it's just because of their genes. As sads go, not serious, but who wants the business of sorting sads when even you had lime zing your brittle cuticles, pain bright as this delicious guacamole. Thank you. I haven't done too many of the drinking poems, so here's one of those. <laughs> this one's called Drown Out. So get annoyed with the ones you love. There's no one else who'd be around you. Still, you're pretty sure happy loud is infuriating to everyone who's neither. At least your kind coworker shared his stash of peaty scotch to celebrate the hard day's work even before home. He said any time, and you know he meant it in a way that he didn't, for he isn't kin, so you can't. Empty bottles are for family, all the said and unsaid, blown across to make trumpets of terrifying nothing. Um, this poem steals a line that I've always loved from my man Godfrey, the great Carol Lombard screwball. Um, but goes in very different places than the rest of the movie. <laughs> it's called Against Personification. An asylum is just an empty room with the right kind of people in it. But then so is a classroom. So I'll forgive this one its tiny size and the student's size, large as an asteroid out hunting dinosaurs. If it's mean of me to make them eke out their poetry in pencil lead, I'll be that some bitch. Be the cruel and human Cenozoic slamming into the Mesozoic like a glacier shaving conifers to razor stubble. I'll never get over being surprised their youth still offers flits of wisdom, lines they don't know enough to die for. It couldn't have been a happy first fish to sprout legs, mount land, gasp at the inexcusable air of a wondrous new world. Maybe that should be a longer poem. <laughs> there might be too many quick jumps in that one. I don't know. Um, we have this giant pine tree in our neighbor's yard, slightly uphill from us, um, that makes us nervous sometimes <laughs> during storms. This is written long before the microbursts of 2017, oh uh, <laughs> which luckily the tree's still there. But thinking about that tree led to this poem. When you wish upon a stop, since we think the worst can't happen if we imagine it, as if just realizing Jack sat tapping at the box tinny lid, then no surprise can sudden, despite the world's cranky turn, we joke the big wind will blow the bigger tree down. Not that there's any sign, though whoever knows how old pine does more than give a bit in the wind, wild enough it holds one note longer than any diva could sing a high C. In our heads, it heads our way, gravity calling it to ground. We also expect our house is spared if flooded with scent. The air is green as we're grateful, chilled to our skin and fur. May our mad imaginations build worsts to fuel fires our home will warm to. Okay. This is a... Uh, all of, can't do the math fast enough, 10 lines, so don't, don't blink. <laughs> Bitter, not in my life, but on my tongue. We can take them when we know they know limits, that bitter is written in an increment of eyelashes. Food needs its sense of fear, so we savor with a sense of endings like a kid in a Halloween graveyard saying, this is what death is, far from afraid, but wise with a new knowing like gunmetal in the mouth. Mm -hmm. 
have to do at least one Halloween poem. It's contractually licensed by our family. <laughs> My wife is the queen of Halloween. So. Um, OK. Um, made a reference earlier to my, one of my grandfathers, my mom's dad, but both my grandparents had worked in the coal mines in Scranton, so all this stuff about bringing coal back connects in a weird way, even though they were both dead long before I was born. So there's this one. To those doing what my grandfathers did, go make your dangerous wage, for we've mercifully recalled the laws that kept the crap from your water. We're kind like that allowing you a suited handful of ways to die for the fewest dollars. Please cough a chorus for us, a ballad of black lung. Buy that big scream with zero down to be teased by a world of plenty, perfect polished teeth, vampires immune to daylight, dawn caught on a hillside row of marble tombstones of those buried a station above you. Toast to knowing between a rock and a hard place is more than words and less than a joke. The mine never yours, just a day's pay, a month to month, the dwindling coal taking you away from surface, justice, even tavern mercy, where at least the whiskey curls night down your gullet, dark as a cancer of anthracite. Sleep some dreams on layaway and dig like your death depended on it. And last one, which is a long one for me, it gets to a second page. <laughs> um, and it seemed fitting for me to end with this one because it um, is about taking the Pacific Surfliner from Santa Barbara down to LA. So it goes through Ventura. How exciting. Thank you, Ventura. Thank you for hosting. And can't wait to hear the rest of you read. This is called A Mash Note for My Country from the Pacific Surfliner. I love my America of cement mixers painted Yahoo red, white, and blue, and so eager to build their diesels practically purr. I love the mountain's vicious slice of freeway, a tattoo we haven't yet quite come to regret, and a sparkle with cars, so many somewheres to be, myths of escape. We're all driving with the top down and the heat on, that California everything. I love the trash that suggests some believe newness is endless. It's dropped in dishes, ditches, flashing like pop art assemblage, arguing many can't be bothered by beauty. I love the dust devils whipping down furrowed fields fallow for a bit until migrants we alternately ignore or hate break their backs for our sweet, sweet berries. They're the best, we boast. I love the bas relief horses hidden in an underpass, only those on the train quick glimpse, public but shy, and nothing like those mighty bronzes in St. Mark's they remind me of anyway. For there's that I love in my America, an equality like rain falling on everyone. So even godless I'm left, praying for a shared soak deep to all our bare bones. Yes. Thank you.